Well, you may can tell I've actually had to do a little real work around here for a change, and uh, I just want to take a couple of minutes out and uh, share a few thoughts with you. I've been thinking about this President's State of the Union address. Ever since the time of Napoleon, democracies have always feared the man on horseback. You know, that's the guy that could come in and take advantage of troubled times, and because of his silver tongue and charisma, uh, he could dazzle the people and uh, get them to do what he wanted, get the, the, the ability to lead them uh, in whatever direction he wanted to lead them in. Apparently, we've got a president who looks at himself in that regard. Uh, think about the things that he was talking about the other day. Think about the things that he said and his obvious lack of credibility to anybody that thinks. He talks about, you know, new jobs and the, and the need for new jobs. While he tries to tax, still, again, uh, after just having done so, the people who create those new jobs. He talks about how important the government is in the creating those uh, jobs. Uh, remember Solyndra? Remember those other companies that uh, uh, went bankrupt because the government just knew that a few billion, a few uh, hundred million uh, would... Uh, uh, be the answer to our jobs problem. Uh, wants to raise the minimum wage when so many of our young people, especially uh, young African Americans, are having a difficulty in entering the job market at the lower rung to work themselves uh, up. It's going to make it even harder uh, for them uh, to find a job. He talks about how proud he is of the fact that we're producing so much oil and gas when he's done everything in the world that he can do to demonize and uses whipping boys, the, the people who produce uh, the oil uh, in this country. Talks about keeping the pressure on Syria. He hasn't kept the pressure on anybody except us. 60,000 people, innocent people, have died uh, in Syria uh, while that dictator uh, has, has had his will, uh, as our president uh, set on his hands. He demands a, a vote uh, on gun control now. Of course, he sat on his hands for four years, never mentioned the subject until it became, uh, he, he, he saw a situation to take advantage of a, of a disaster and it became politically uh, uh, advantageous to him. The problem is he can't get a vote in the, in the Senate because Democrats don't want to vote on the issue either. They're not going to commit political suicide because uh, the president wants international uh, uh, applause. Immigration uh, reform, again, sat on his hands for four years, didn't do anything until Republicans raised their hands on the issue. Now he wants to get out in front and uh, lead uh, that parade. And the idea of cutting spending, it would decimate our economy. It would just kill uh, the, the innocent and the young and the old and all the in-between. We're talking about trying to cut uh, three cents out of every dollar. Uh, with this sequester that the Congress and the President put in place. It was actually the President's idea to start with about a year and a half ago, and now he's trying to back out of that deal. While on the other hand, all the money, additional money that he wants to continue spending is not going to raise our deficit one penny. One penny. You know, sometimes I fear for our country when I listen to such as this and know that he's reaching millions. Uh, of people. But there's a thing about men on horseback, and that is that eventually the people always catch on. Um, in his zeal to uh, uh, keep his uh, foot on the neck of the Republican Party and destroy them uh, if he uh, can, he's overreaching uh, and he's misjudging the American people in my estimation. I think you're going to see evidence of that in next year's uh, off-year congressional uh, elections. There's a thing about men on horseback. They always have a Waterloo. See you later.